Hey everyone, and welcome to my quick video on Arch Linux package management, what you need to know. My name is Josh, and let's get started. So the motivation for this video and topic was, I was helping one of my roommates set up his first Arch system, and going through obviously one of the biggest things to wrap your head around, especially those who are newer to Linux in general, is exactly what package management is, why it matters, and how to use it. And it reminded me of some of the key things that I had first learned when I started on Arch around usage of Pacman, usage of the user repository, Yowert as a tool, and we found a lot of good info out there that he could reference, but what we often found is it would go too deep or it would focus too much on one facet of doing package management. So I wanted to put something together that kind of glazed over some of the big important topics where you could leave it and get started with managing packages on your system. You'll find this leaves out some key details that some might feel are really important, but again, this is really just something to get started and get a perspective on the different pieces which you could then dive deeper into. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is Pacman, which is Arch's package manager. So those of you who are a little bit newer to package management in general, keep in mind that these tools are something that handles the downloading, installation, updating, and removing packages on your system. And most Linux distributions follow this philosophy where you have a package manager that manages the actual software and you use only the package manager to manage software. So you have a consistent interface for interacting with what's installed, what needs to be upgraded, and so on. And you've even found over the years that tools have been built for things like Mac, which would be Homebrew, and some Windows-like package managers as well to add those types of supports to both Windows and OS X. In the bottom here, you can see the Pac-Man help option, which is probably one of the most key things when you're getting started. So we'll pull that open in a terminal right now. If I were to go in and say pacman dash dash help, I'll get some information around the pacman pieces that I can do or operations I can do. Of course, pacman gives you the ability to check out the man pages just like any Unix tool. So if you want a more detailed overview of pacman's usage, that would be a great way to start. But just remembering the help operation to get all these different operations you can add will be key. And another thing as well as we dive deeper, when you do Pac-Man help and you get these listed out, note that if you need more details on a specific operation, like let's say sync, you can add the help flag to that. So essentially I'm saying, I wanna do a Pac-Man sync operation, something we'll talk about, but I'm curious of what options that I would have available to me with sync. So by running help, these are all of the options that I can add to the sync operation. So pretty easy with just using Pac-Man to get the details you need, like most Unix-like tools, nothing special. So again, Pac-Man is our package manager and is what we're gonna use throughout this tutorial. Now, before we actually install software on our system, it's also important we understand this notion of repositories. And this is what kind of screwed me up when I was first learning all the different facets of package management. So the official repositories that Arch Linux provides are going to give us places where packages are held that Pac-Man can access, download, install, and so on. And Arch effectively has these maintainers, they call them, that work in these official repositories and own packages, make sure they stay up to date, they're accessible, and so on via Pac-Man. The repositories, again, accessible via Pac-Man, and sometimes, as you dive deeper and deeper, you're gonna find some of the packages you're looking for might not exist in the official repository or in an official repository. So an example, when we were working together, my roommate and I, as we were going through and installing things like Go or OpenSSL or Nginx, but when we dive a little bit deeper and try to install something like PyCharm to do Python development, we couldn't get that out of the official repository. And that's where we needed to talk about some alternative ones as well, which I'll get into. But first, let's start off with the official repository and get some perspective on that. So as far as the Arch official repository is concerned, you can go to archlinux.org and inside of this website, you'll actually be presented with a package search option, which you can use to search for different packages. So as an example, if I wanted to come in here and pull up a package for SIPCalc, which is a calculator for subnet ranges, it does CIDR notation and things like that to calculate subnets. You can see inside of here, it'll provide what packages are available for the different architectures, 32 and 64 bit or other architectures as well, if they're available. So being 64-bit, I'd come into the IPCalc 
or SIP calc, and I can see some information about SIP calc. I can see it's in a repository called community. Now this is still an official repository. It's just think of it kind of like a folder or category. I can see who the maintainer is, the size and information about the package, when it was updated and so on. And Pac-Man's also gonna do a good job of making sure I've got dependencies. So if I didn't already have glibc, it's gonna make sure in the installation of SIP calc that it installs glibc or any other dependencies that are needed for this specific package. So pretty simple. Now, most users are actually gonna use Pac-Man to find these packages rather than the website itself. So if we go in and once again do Pac-Man help, if we dive a little bit deeper into the sync operation, we'll find that this is a way for us to go out to these remote repositories and bring things down. But to get started with sync, we need to make sure our local database is synced up with the remote database. Make sure we know where all the repositories and packages are and if they're available. So we can come inside of here and you may need to run this as sudo. We can do sudo pacman s and in fact, I'll even show you if I do Pac-Man capital S and just do help real quick. In the options, there's a Y flag that I can add that will refresh my local database with that package database that's remote. So essentially, going back to that command I was just typing in, if I do sudo Pac-Man dash capital S for sync, add the Y flag in and hit enter, it is going to synchronize the package databases and bring those down to my system, making sure that all of the updated packages or metadata about them in the repositories and so on are now available. So we know that this was part of the community, but let's see if we can still just search for SIP calc. So if I do pacman s again and ask for help, Another sync flag that we can use is search, which takes a regex argument. So if we search for IP calc, we should be able to see SIP calc inside of here. So we'll do another Pac-Man, and this one shouldn't require sudo, dash capital S for sync, lowercase s for search, and ask for IP calc. And two packages pop up. There is a IP calc that is a different package, maybe has different features. And then there's SIP calc, the one that I was looking at earlier, its version and some details about it as well. Now on my system, I want SIP calc. So if you're doing this with me, we would simply do a sudo pacman s for sync. And then we would ask for SIP calc. It will let me know, hey, I'm going to install this package. Here's the size, we'll hit yes and now SIP calc is on our system. And that's the great thing about these systems is it's a singular way to get software on and installed and maintained. So now that SIP calc is there, we should be able to run SIP calc on our system. And this particular tool, you can do things like plug in a CIDR. So if I do a slash 24, it's going to give me details about the subnet ranges and information with this tool. And now we've got this package installed, which is pretty cool. Now, as you dive deeper into working with Pac-Man, you're gonna find a lot of more features very helpful to you. So another one, for example, is if I do help again on the sync, is the sys upgrade. So this is one that will actually go through and upgrade all the packages on your systems. Rather than going through and trying to figure out which little piece or package you need to upgrade, you can do a full system upgrade at once, making sure things are up to date and secure and so on. So effectively, if we did a pacman s and typically we probably would do a Y with this as well, just to make sure we've got the newest database info, and then a U, we can run this and it will make sure everything's synchronized. Now notice this time when it synced, it noticed that everything was up to date. So no database changes had happened since I last ran the Y command. And then it's gonna go through, and in fact, it's even smart enough to let me know, hey Josh, you were messing around with your system and now you've got some conflicting dependencies. Do you wanna remove them? For now, I'm just gonna hit yes to this. So, accidentally hit end there. Yes, 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 and yes. Possible that you won't even be prompted for these. And once I do go through all these conflicting things, it will find all the packages that need upgrades. And if I do run this update, all of these packages will be upgraded, of course, and, and that's about it. So a nice way to maintain and keep everything up to date cleanly. Now, another thing as well that makes this really nice is rather than trying to figure out where SIP calc resides and its dependencies and so on, we can very cleanly remove SIP calc from our system. So again, if we do pacman help, we'll notice that there is a remove command inside of here. And the remove command 
if we do pacman-r help for remove, is gonna provide us with some of the remove options, in which case we can add in the S flag, which is a helpful one to remove unnecessary dependencies. So you saw that glib and some other dependencies could be attached to these packages we install. If we uninstall the package, we probably don't want all the dependencies to hang around that aren't needed by other pieces of software. So we can add that S flag in to ensure that that doesn't take place. So once again, we'll do sudo pacman rs. We will ask to uninstall sipcalc. It'll let us know how much the removed size is. And now that package is no longer part of our system. And if we try to run sipcalc, it's no longer accessible to us because it's been removed. Very clean, easy way to manage these packages. Now, this begs the question, when we dive a little bit deeper and we start talking about other software we need, what if we're a Python developer and we want to use PyCharm, IntelliJ's Python module, or IDE, if you will? Well, once again, we could come in here and we could run pacman search, and we could see if there are any Py PyCharm packages, which you'll notice there aren't any. Now, this brings open the question of how exactly do we install these extra packages? And this is where the Arch user repository comes into play. AUR is going to be a location where you can find lots of extra packages, specifically ones that are maintained by the community. Now, for security reasons and to make sure that you can trust Pac-Man with only official packages, it is something that Pac-Man does not access directly. And you have multiple install methods that you can use to find things on the Arch user repository and then install them on your system. Obviously, the big caveat is being maintained by the community. There's less of a guarantee that it works. It's more on you to make sure that software is safe, maintained correctly, and so on. So let's use PyCharm as an example here. If we come in and head to the Arch user repository, which is aur.archlinux.org, we can see a very similar layout where we've got a package search option. And if we search for PyCharm inside of the package search, we're gonna get a bunch of different packages. Now, once again, being maintained by the community, these votes and popularity counts might be quite relevant to me, along with information about the maintainer. I wanna make sure I'm not putting any type of bad software on my machine. Now, PyCharm community seems to be used quite a bit. I'll come inside of PyCharm community, and you'll notice the details are a little bit different. There's a git clone URL, there's an upstream URL, there's, in this case, a larger list of dependencies. That's just because it requires a lot more. And then you also see comments. You can even see where people are having issues and the maintainer potentially fix those issues and so on. So a pretty active community. Now we do need to get PyCharm community on our system. And there's a couple ways we can do this. We could actually download effectively the package and then tell Pac-Man to install it directly. One approach that I prefer to take is just grabbing the Git repository. I find it quite simple. So if we copy the Git clone URL right here, one thing this approach will require you to do is to have Git on your system. So if you have, um, if you effectively have Git inside of your system already, you're good to go, or you may need to install Git through Pacman, which is being a official uh, package in the official repository, you should be able to install it easily. So Git on our system. I moved to my temp directory just so all this Git stuff will get deleted when I restart my system. And all we've got to do here is clone down that repository, pycharm-community.git, and it's gonna bring down that Git repository, which is actually gonna just have a pretty simple file inside of it. If you look inside of PyCharm community, you're gonna find a package build file, and typically this is the key file that you're going to see inside of these packages, if you will. If you look inside of package build, it's actually gonna be a shell-like script that defines exactly how the package should be built, some of the dependencies and optional dependencies that are needed to install this package, some checksum information, and so on. The nice thing is the maintainer has put these packages together for you, so generally you won't have to message with, mess with the package build file itself. What you will have to mess with though is the make package command. So effectively what make package is gonna let you do is go in and make a package based on the package file. So inside of here you can see that there is a sync dependencies, which basically says when I make the package, if I'm missing any dependencies on my system, I will download them. And once the package has been built, I'm gonna go ahead and install the package inside of here as well. So we'll run the S and I flag together here. Make package, 
SI. Note that I'm inside of that Git repo for PyCharm community. And now it's effectively gonna come in here and start downloading what it needs along with installing once it's built. Now this process will take longer than a normal Pac-Man download because there is a build cycle that it's gonna go through and so on. So once this is complete, we'll come back and make sure that PyCharm is able to be launched on our host machine. Now that the build is complete, I'll throw my password in as needed by the package manager and it will prompt me for the install, letting me know exactly how much space this is gonna take up. So I'll run the install, which is again, the quicker part of the process, building is the longer, and once this finishes for the installation, it should now be available on my system and able to be ran. Now, this application being GUI-based, effectively we could start it up from terminal, or if you have like some type of app launcher, you could do it from there as well. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and just launch it from terminal to start out. So I'll run PyCharm. I'm gonna direct all of the output from this app to dev null, make sure it doesn't bother my window. And I'll also escape out of it so that my terminal can keep taking commands and it'll just be a PID in the background. So I'll run that and boom, there's PyCharm. So PyCharm's now installed on my machine. I can set up projects, work with them and run them. And that all came out of the Arch user repository that you see in the left here. Now, we could have just gone to IntelliJ's website and installed PyCharm directly, but one of the reasons that we did not take that approach is we want Pac-Man to manage all of our packages. So if I look inside of Pac-Man and check out the query operation, we can do a query search with the S option. So we'll do a Pac-Man QS and ask for the PyCharm and we can just do it fuzzy here, PyCharm. And we can see on my system that Pac-Man is aware of PyCharm living on my machine, which is great, which means that I now can manage it, uninstall it, and so on from this location. So hypothetically, I am bailing on PyCharm, I don't need it anymore, so I can come inside of here and basically remove PyCharm. So I'll do Pac-Man-R and add the S in to make sure all optional dependencies are gone. I'm going to do PyCharm community, since that is the full name of the package, and hit yes. And now PyCharm has been removed from my system. So it's no longer on here. If I try to run PyCharm, it is, of course, not going to launch, which is exactly what I want. So now you've got this idea of the official repositories and the user repositories. One thing that has also come to fruition in the Arch community is this notion of AUR helpers, as the wiki puts it. Yaourt's probably the most common one, and basically Yaourt is like a tool that extends Pac-Man's default functionality. So not only can you use it to access the official repository, remove, you know, add packages just like Pac-Man, but you can use it for the Arch user repository as well. It's got built-in support. You'll find it to be a little bit more interactive with how it gives you options and prompts you. Again, the convenience of mixing both AUR and official repos is quite nice. And it's effectively installed like any other package. So Yaourt's it's just another package we'd bring down from the user repository and set up. Personally, I don't use Yaourt. I just strictly use Pac-Man and then go out to the AUR website, get the Git repo as I showed you to install packages. But starting out, you might wanna give this tool a shot because it can be a really nice convenience. If you go out to the Arch Wiki or just search for Yaourt install, you'll find the Yaourt page and it has some basic instructions on how to set up Yaourt on your system. So if you're following along, you may just wanna pause now and run through these quick commands. They should look familiar to you because these are effectively the same commands that I was using previously when I was going in and installing PyCharm on my system. So if I come in and make package, once again, SI to grab dependencies and install, it's gonna have me put in two pieces here. Right now I'm doing the package query package and in a moment I'll do the actual Yaourt package itself. So come in here and all these are basically gonna be junk directories for me but I do need to grab the Git repo for each one. All right, so come in and then CD into Yaourt. And once Yaourt's been CD'd into, make package SI again. Oops, make sure I do the I in there as well. Goes through, builds, prompts me to install, pretty simple. And now we have this Yaourt tool on our machine. And if we start off with, just make sure I get out of here so it doesn't look like I'm running a binary. So do Yaourt and do help. 
and boom, there are our commands, just like you would be used to with Pac-Man plus or minus some. So generally, you should be able to look through things pretty easily inside of here. So we used two packages in our example so far, SIPCalc, part of the official repo, and PyCharm, which was a user package. So let's check this out. If we do Yaourt and do the same search command we had done before and ask for SIPCalc, or we'll just do IPCalc to keep it simple, there are the two packages we had seen before, plus some extra ones inside of AUR. So you can see how it kind of mixes these. These might be a Python implementation of IPCalc or something like that. So we get an expanded list inside of here. And when we run things like install, we'll be prompted for which one we want to use and so on. Now, similarly, as you can see from the AUR here, if we do run Yaourt and we do a search for PyCharm, Unlike Pac-Man, we actually will get all these AUR things we had seen from the website. So here's PyCharm community that we had set up previously. So the installation process through Yaourt is identical to what we're used to with Pac-Man. We would just use the sync operation, provide the package name, and hit enter. And effectively, we're going to go through a similar process where it's actually going to go out and start the build process for this. It'll also let us know that, hey, this is an unsupported package, so make sure you trust it. And ask us if we want to edit that package build file, the descriptor I was showing you earlier. Generally, I don't edit the package build file unless I really need to customize something. And I will prompt to continue installing PyCharm community with Y. Again, this is how it's a little bit more interactive than Pac-Man, giving us some more prompts and things of that nature. Now I've just got to wait for the actual tarball to download. And once that download is complete and all of the different build stuff gets set up correctly, I should be set to install PyCharm. And now that the build is completed and cleanup has completed, I will hit yes to continue installing, provide my password, and very similar to what we'd seen before with Pac-Man, it is now looking to install which I'll hit yes, and it will install on my system, in which PyCharm should officially be accessible to me. So now it's installed, and we'll actually go in, and I'll do this through an app launcher this time. So go to a new workspace. So again, if you have an app launcher, like if you're running um, some type of like Unity, or if you're using some type of XFCE, some, some type of other GUI with some other app launcher, you may have a different approach. <laughs> In this case, I'm using i3, so the i3 launcher will be what I use. And if I type in PyCharm up here, you can see PyCharm shows up. I can launch that application, and now PyCharm is accessible to me, and I can begin using it. So Yaourt is a tool you may wish to check out. Again, you can kind of mix and match. So if I go in with Pac-Man and do a query search for PyCharm, you'll see it's aware of PyCharm. And of course, if I go inside of here with Yaourt and do the same thing, it is also aware of PyCharm. So depending on if you find the feature set very, very helpful, you may see Yaourt being a big benefit for you. Nonetheless, I hope this video gave you a pretty good idea of what exactly the different facets of package management, at least from an intro standpoint, are available to you on Arch Linux. Also note that a written version of this content with probably a little bit more context around some of the topics is available at my site, octets.com. So you'll see kind of a walkthrough with all the different commands if you wanna try them yourself. And you can also grab me on Twitter as well. Again, hope you found this helpful and best of luck using Arch Linux.